Lord. We love you, God. Oh, God, my rock, unshaken one. In you I find my peace. I'll worship you for all. And shame you took away Your grace and mercy for my way My life's forever yours You call me as your I love you, God, my shield. Oh. 
Good morning, Every Nation Church Penang. How are you this morning? You comfortable watching online? Yeah, I believe so. Let us uh, worship the Lord because He's worthy of our worship and worthy, of course, of our praise. The praise goes on. Amen. And we must praise the Lord. If you don't, the Bible says, the trees will clap their hands and the stones will cry out. Praise the Lord. Take it away. Now we cry, what is this common life? A sacrifice of praise. A city on a hill, surrender to your will, your glory on this day. Your glory on this place. Awesome in this place. Jesus, you are awesome in this place. That's right, man. Worthy to be praised. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. Let's praise Him in our home today. You will be praised. You'll let the force of praise consume in every space. It's uncontainable. Coming like a flood, our hearts are filling up. All things are possible. Let's claim it. All things are possible. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. Worthy to be praised, Jesus, you are worthy to be praised. You will be praised.
Church, don't you think that our God is so awesome that despite everything that's happening, He still remains the same. He still remains awesome and worthy of our praise. He still remains faithful and good. So why don't we all just pour our praises to Him today?
want to dwell in your presence right now. Dwell in your peace, oh God. Send the 
Thank you, worship team. Now I would like to read from、uh, Psalm 91. Verse 1 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Welcome back. We are here to honor God and to make disciples. I would like to make some a n n o u n c e m e n t now. The first announcement is the Purple Book. The Purple Book starts July 3rd to August 7th, and you can sign up by the QR code. Next announcement this is for working adults. This is the skill set for success. So, you can mark your calendar on June 30th. You must register for this too. That's all for the announcement. I would like to welcome the super mom, Kai c h u i n because he's going to give us the offering message. Thank you, Uncle Max. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. You know, I like what the Bible says in Psalms 103, verse 13. The Lord is like a father to his children. And I really love that. You know, our God is not like just like any other God sitting high and above, unreachable. He's my daddy, you know, I'm his baby. And this daddy cares the world about me. I can run to him freely, like baby to his daddy. And I can manja with him. And I know he always w e l c o m e me with his wide open arms. And, but oftentimes, people forget how good, or how rich our daddy is. He is rich, he owns the earth, you know, and he wants his children to be rich and prosperous as well. And he doesn't really need our money, you know, he doesn't need at all. Or our giving. Our giving is for ourselves, not him. And giving or tithing is not God's way of raising money, but his way of raising children. You know, God wants us to cultivate a generous and God centered heart. And when we give, we defeat our selfishness, our greed, we develop greater faith, we create community, we are blessed. And most importantly, it makes us more like our daddy. You know, that's the beauty of tithing. You know, personally, I, I enjoy giving. I find giving is life. Giving. And I must say that God has so blessed our life and our family that you know, I can't imagine living any other way. So come and join us in giving today. You know, shall we pray? Hallelujah. Dear, dear Daddy in heaven, you know, thank you so much for inviting us you know, into such a special relationship with you. And then today, I pray that you will make yourself known to us in a much deeper and personal way. And you help us to grasp that fullness of your love. You know, man, may we give you and out of that love that you have for us. Bless this time offering. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Every Nation Church Penang, I'm Teacher Agnes from Kids Church. And I'm Teacher D. Happy Father's Day to all fantastic fathers out there! Well, we all know that fathers are always the ones who fall asleep after dinner while mothers do the dishes. And fathers are always the ones, you know, playing games on their phones while mothers put us to bed. That's my father actually. <laughs> I do agree with that one, Teacher Agnes. But being a father is not easy, especially when you need to change、yeah. that broken light bulb, patch those hot p o t a t e s and play pretend as an animal for your children's entertainment, isn't it? Correct. Well, we have c a m e up with something fun to honor all fathers on this special day. We 
want to put some fathers to test. Yes, we are going to have a pop quiz with some fathers where we are going to ask some basic questions about their children and their children will be their judges. So, without further ado, let's welcome our fantastic fathers. Yay! Um, how would you describe your relationship with your children? What I can say is that I know child very well, but somehow my daughter, um, I think there's some things that she's hiding from me already. Start, started when <laughs> she became uh, a teenager, I think. We, we have this um, father and son bonding, I think, uh, more than before that we, we are in the Philippines. Because we have a lot of time to be together here in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> Jaden, uh, you know, we we are kind of like friends in a way. La. I am uh, most comfortable with him. We joke uh, a lot. Uh, we tickle each other. We uh, kacau each other. Kacau means we disturb each other a bit. We also argue a lot. Yeah, correct. Right so you you think you know your child well, is it? Uh maybe eighty <laughs> percent. Can you go ahead and give us the complete birthday? Birthday. Yeah. August thirteen. Jana's birthday is August twenty one, two thousand one. And then uh, Kyle's birthday is October 10, 1998. Vince is uh, July 7, so uh, 2011, uh, 2012. And then Vince uh, is April 10, 2011. Uh, 27 August 2002. Is it? Hey, 2008. 2008, sorry. <laughs> I could mix up with the gem. Yeah, it's coming June 30, and um, um, his birth year is 2008. Yeah, actually, I can also tell the time. It's 8.03 a.m. Well, Daddy, uh, can you name uh, Jaden's best friend? Uh, your, your school friend, what's his name already? I'm going to. What's his name? I cannot tell you. Well, thumbs down from, from me on that one. Libby. <laughs> Franz and Esser. I don't really know. <laughs> what are their favorite colors? Uh, Kyle's favorite color, I think, is uh, blue. Mm -hmm. Kyle's favorite mm -hmm. color, I think, is gray. Huh? Purple. My favorite color is blue. Beans like blue color. So it's obviously. I like black. <laughs> and then, uh, I like black. Black. So you're all both wearing black. How about what are their favorite subjects? Jana's favorite subject, I think, might be uh, English. Alright. And then Kyle? Kyle's favorite subject is recent. Recent. <laughs> favorite subject English or? I think it's English. All of them. <laughs> All of them, yeah. even math? It's, it's math. We would like to uh, request for a simple but sweet message for your daddy. Greatest father in the world. Hmm. Thanks for buying me the laptop and my phone. And... I just want to say I love you, Pop. Because like, you were strong, you were funny. You were great. You were always there to support me. That is, it doesn't matter if you got it right or wrong. It doesn't matter if you can't remember little things about us. Because we still love you. Correct. Daddies, thank you for protecting and providing for our family's needs. You are indeed a hero to us. Right now, Kids Church would like to present a song to all fathers out there. 
in you, we see a hero. Every truth you teach, the prayers that you say, they will never be lost or fade away. All the hours you spend, just be my friend, our heroic and brave in every way. I see a hero, I see a light, living by faith. Hi everyone, today is a special day. Today is Father's Day. I want to take this opportunity to wish every father happy Father's Day. You know, we have a special gift for every father. Our team is doing their very best to deliver that gift to you. You know, this morning we are very privileged to have Pastor Charles Curtis with us. You know, he is more than a, a, a pastor. He has a heart of missionary mission and uh, Asia is right in his heart. You know, when I look back at the last year uh, calendar, we actually have Pastor Charles right here, okay, with us. Okay, he, he gave a word during our combined Chinese New Year celebration service. Now, today I asked him, okay, to give us a word, okay, for this day, Father's Day. And now, let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Charles Curtis as he brings us a Father's Day message. Greetings to you, everyone, from Every Nation Church Penang. Wow, what a great honor it is to share the message with you today, today being Father's Day. And of course, we're missing you and thinking about you so much. What great respect Jane and I have for Pastor Jonathan and Miyok and wish we could be there with you. But here we are. I'm, I'm sharing with you a message and I'm sitting here in my office in the USA. Uh, it's the beginning of June, so you're getting this message a little bit early, and this has been a wonderful time for me to study and prepare, thinking about you as a church. Well, when we consider Father's Day, we need to realize that uh, this day is being celebrated in many nations around the world. And generally speaking, Mother's Day messages are speaking of affirmation and comfort and um, and thanks to mothers for everything they've done. And my experience as a pastor over the years has been that Father's Day messages are oftentimes a, a call to action and uh, calling up fathers to, to greater spiritual responsibility, etc. Today I'm going to approach it in a many varied uh, aspect and there is no PowerPoint, so I'm going to ask you if you have access to Bible, if you have access to your to, to media, uh, go ahead and and make make that available to yourself because we'll read several scriptures together. I'll be reading directly from my Bible. But when we think about Father's Day, there's one thing I I need to to start with. You know, the Apostle Paul said this in First Corinthians chapter four, uh, verse. 15, he made these statements. He said, uh, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Paul was saying that he was a spiritual father to the people of the city of Corinth, to the church at Corinth. And I just want to acknowledge the fact that God does raise up spiritual fathers and mothers in the church to care for the church, just like natural fathers care for the family, because the church is a spiritual family. And so I'm here to honor Pastor Jonathan. I know listening to him and hearing his heart 
what a spiritual father God has given to you in this man and a spiritual mother in Miok to share with you their, their heart, their passion, their desire. Now, when we think about a Father's Day message, sometimes uh, uh, we would think that if, well, if I'm not a father, I can just kind of tune out and check out. But you know, these principles are are applicable for every aspect of life. They're applicable in in uh, in the family, in relationships, in business, in in uh, in friendships as well. And I, I want to I want you to consider some thought here that all ministry, because fathering is a ministry, all ministry is others-centered. So in these few minutes, we're going to share with you several, several thoughts. And what I want to say to you today is that fathers do these, these things. They do th these things that I'm going to describe to you, uh, and they're all going to start with the letter P. By the way, in preaching or in public speaking, this is called alliteration. Starting something with a P and every point has a P. Well, I'm going to share with you these five points that all begin with the letter P. Well, the first one that I want to share with you is this, that fathers provide. Fathers provide. You know, Paul instructed Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. He said these words, If anyone does not provide for his own household, especially for those of his own family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Fathers, it's inherent. It's a God-given makeup that God puts into the heart of fathers that they have a desire and a passion and a burden to provide. Now, that doesn't mean that women don't go out the door to work and and help uh, monetarily. Of course, women's work uh, outside of the home and in the home is greatly valued. But there, there seems to be a, a way that God has hardwired fathers, that they, they have a sense of provision responsibility, that I have to find a way to provide for the needs of my family. I have respected so many fathers that I've known who've lived sacrificially for themselves. They've gone without that their children might have. But you realize Paul was chiding uh, any father that was under the hearing of this letter that Timothy would have and maybe read in the church, that if any man did not provide for his own household, for his own family, that he was really worse than an unbeliever. I want to tell you that it's a delight for me as a father, and I'm sure for you, those of you who are fathers, to provide, to see your children have nice things, to see them provided for for their education. You know, one of my great desires as a father has been to make sure that my children have something that is actually better than me. And uh, it, it's been it's been a delight to do that. And I want to encourage you that this idea of provision, God will make a way. If you as a father are, are feeling, wow, there's there's a lack in, in provision, maybe uh, the job market is, is scarce or funds are limited, pray for provision because provision is not really only your responsibility to earn, but it's your responsibility as a father to go out and call on the name of the Lord. Lord, provide for my children. Provide for my household. Provide for my wife. So this is one that is exclusionary to, to fathers. And I, I want to encourage you, believe God for provision in your household. The first thing fathers do is provide. The second thing that we see that fathers do is that fathers protect. Fathers protect. You know, the Bible teaches us that uh, that just like a shepherd takes care of sheep, fathers protect their sheep. Jesus said this in John chapter 10, that I'm the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. Fathers are called to and they most often lay down their lives for their children. They, they give up their lives sacrificially. You know, just right now, the, 
the, the scripture exhorts us in Ephesians chapter 6 to honor your father and your mother. And that doesn't mean just while they're alive. It means to honor their memory. I'm here to tell you, I, I honor my dad. Wow, I could almost get tearful as I think about it. My dad grew up during what was the Great Depression. And uh, he, he was a, a young boy. His father lost his work. Uh, my, my grandfather was a, was a shoemaker. He lost his work. And my father, my poor dad, I think about him at 10 years old. He was selling newspapers on the streets and he worked his whole life to provide. But he also was a protecting father to me. He laid down his life for me. And I think about some of the things that he did to see that my life was under his protection and care. I want to share with you a story that's been very, very powerfully used in my life. Uh, it is not an easy story to think about, but it is a true story written by an author, Patrick Morley. Patrick Morley was, uh, was an author who wrote a book called The Man in the Mirror. It's a little bit of a dated book, but it's about a call to responsibility as men. Patrick Morley wrote about this fishing trip that several men took to the Alaskan interior and they flew in on what is called float planes. Many of you have seen these. I've never flown in one. I've seen them take off and land in Alaska on lakes, not on rivers, but on lakes. But they, these men were all friends, and one of the men had their son on this trip who was 12 years old. And what they did is they flew into the mouth of a river. And uh, if you don't know this, that salmon fish run up river to spawn. And uh, the fishing at a certain time of year in the fall is just excellent. It's just outstanding. And I actually have fished the rivers in Alaska during the autumn season. Well, these men, would they, they flew into some of the mouths of these rivers and just stood in the waters and cast their line and caught their catch of fish, of salmon fish. And, uh, well, they, they were having such a wonderful day, and their plane was, was at the mouth of this river just dumping into the ocean. But what they didn't realize is when the day was over, uh, sun was, was going down, they were going to take out and fly back to their, their base camp. But the, the plane now was uh, subject to the tide and it became low tide. And the, the plane was actually lying on, on gravel rock in, in this particular area of, of the seabed. And so they, they knew that they couldn't fly because the, the floats of the plane needed to be in water in order to have the, the plane take off. So what they decided is that they would sleep in the plane. And by the way, that was a very wise thing, because whenever you get fish in Alaskan rivers in the autumn season, there are always grizzly bears around. And I, I have seen uh, videos I've never seen in person, but I have seen videos of grizzly bear chasing men who are fishing. Well, these men didn't want to have that experience, so they slept inside the plane. The long story short is this. That when they woke up in the morning, they were floating on, on the water and they decided that they would just take off right away. And the pilot revved up the engine, fired up the engine. And when they started to try and take off on the water, ga gathering speed, what the, what the pilot didn't realize is that the plane started to tilt and could not get airborne on one side. It was weighty on one side. And they tried to shift their weight to the other side. But what had happened was that the plane uh, had had actually the float on the bottom or the pontoon had been pierced by some sharp gravel and took on and filled itself up with water. Well, that plane, a few hundred yards into the into the ocean, it just dipped itself into the ocean and sunk almost right away. And these men, just a few hundred feet, pardon me, a few hundred meters maybe if you want to say, or feet, they started swimming to shore because uh, they, were, they were in icy water and uh, the, the tide was rising. Well, the problem was, was that uh, one of the, the men with his son, 
the son could not power himself swimming towards shore and he was struggling as much as he could and the father was trying to help him. All the other men powered themselves as great swimmers and got themselves to shore. But this man, he was trying to help his son, trying to help his son. And they kept on drifting further and further away from the shore. And this man, the friend of all of them and his son, his 12-year-old son, they started to drift out of sight. And what the, the men watched was they, they prayed and watched as Christian men. But they watched this man and, and having his arms wrapped around his son in this frigid Alaskan water, they watched them just drift out to sea till they could see them no more. And they met with their death in the open sea. This man was willing to give his life. He could have swam to shore on his own, but any good father would never have done that. And this man did that. He gave his life and he and both he and his son lost their lives. And what a great moment it must have been in heaven for that. What a touching story it is. And I've thought about that story and I've thought, I don't think there would be a father that I know personally that wouldn't do the very same thing. But likely the truth of this story is, is that I, I believe that we need to do this every single day. We need to give ourselves to our children's lives every single day to protect them from danger, to protect them from harm. We need to, when they go out the door to school, we need to pray for them. My son just rented an apartment in Nashville City and we helped him get moved in. We just prayed for him protection over that apartment, protection from any people that would try to do him harm. He He's in his 30s. We're still believing for protection and we still want that. Okay, so let's go on as we read these five P alliteration points. Well, the third one is that fathers perceive, fathers perceive. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, what a famous verse of scripture Train up a child in a way he should go or she should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Fathers don't only train up a child in the ways of the Lord, as we're all called to do that, but fathers are called to train up a child in the way that he, that she, should uniquely go. Every child has a particular bent. They have a particular wiring and giftedness from God and every father needs to know what is that thing that makes my child uh, unique to themselves and unique to the world. And to see greatness in our children, we need to perceive their giftings and their callings and to help to steer them in that way. And of course, part of the part of the perceiving is is a spiritual discerning. We need to pray for that. Lord, show me how to train up my child in the way that he should go. Now, notice it doesn't mean that the way that I think he should go. Sometimes uh, we as fathers, we may have been guilty of trying to mold our children into a shape or into a life or lifestyle or a career or profession that we want them to do. And uh, that can be uh, sometimes that can be based by fear that if I don't get them postured for a very lucrative career, then what will they be able to do when they get older? How will they be able to help me and take care of me? But we need to realize that if our children are moving in the way that they should go, they will find success if they honor God and love God. And provision for them will likely never be a, a lack because when somebody is passionate and somebody is skilled at their their task and their calling, they will they will never lack for an income to do the thing that they're doing. Fathers perceive. Another thing about this is they promote. They promote their their children. They announce their children's skills and abilities. They try to make opportunities for their children. They they don't just imagine that children have to find their own way, 
but they realize that they need to help promote their children towards uh, the future. Well, actually, perceive and promote go together. Train up a child in a way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, number four is this. Fathers are patient. Fathers are patient. Let's just review. Number one, fathers provide. Number two, fathers protect. Number three, fathers perceive and they promote. And number four, fathers are patient. Fathers are patient. The story of the prodigal son is something that has deeply impacted me, uh, really, my, my whole life. It's been a great preaching theme for me to preach out of Luke chapter 15, these parables of uh, the lost coin, the, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. But we find the familiar story. The father sat and waited and watched. He sat and waited and watched, knowing that his son was out there, but also knowing by faith in patience that his son would return. I don't know what you're facing with your children. Some of us have faced different challenges of faith concerning the future of our children's lives. We need to have confidence that God is going to complete his work in our children's lives, that his hand is upon them. They've been under the umbrella of the covenant of your faith and of your, of you and fathers and mothers of your faith. And they will, I am persuaded by God, God will give them every opportunity to return to him. Fathers are patient. Our heavenly father is patient for us. If we're ever wayward or wandering away, he's patient for us to return, to repent, and to give our hearts back to the Lord. And this father, he waited. Interesting, the uh, the, the story is, is that the father had prepared, um, he had prepared the fatted calf. He had prepared a, a royal robe and a ring, and he had prepared a party to be uh, to be had for the son who is returning. The interesting verbiage in the prodigal son story is this, that uh, after the son returned, the father said, bring here the fatted calf, not just a fatted calf, the fatted calf. That was the, the calf that was prepared. So the father was patient, but he was also preparing all of these things for the son's return. And I, I want to encourage you, be patient with your children. Be patient uh, with the things that God has entrusted you with. Impatience is, a, is really a very common experience for all of us. We can become frustrated. You know, right now I'm, I'm videoing this thing on my iPhone. It's on a tripod and Sometimes, me, I'm, I'm an old recycled geek. I worked in IT and I've always maintained a little bit of an edge with, uh, with computers and technology. But sometimes I get frustrated and impatient that technology is not really performing the way it, it should. So this, this is always a, a concern for me as, as a man that I'm maintaining patience and I'm showing forth the fruit of patience as a, as a godly man, as a husband, as a father. Okay, well, this is the last one, and I know this is a short message, but I pray that this will, uh, will encourage you. The last one is that fathers pursue. Fathers pursue. And I want to draw attention maybe to this prodigal son story. Because it, it is interesting that the father did not pursue. The father was not going out looking for him. And the question has often been asked, why didn't the father go searching for him? And this is a certain a particular twist. It doesn't really relate to fathers. But think about this. In the Hebrew family, much like it's true, because I know I'm speaking to a lot of you who are Chinese, 
in the Hebrew family, in the Chinese family, certainly in my ethnic families of Southern European ethnicity, the oldest son, the elder brother, held a specific place of authority in the home. He had responsibility in, in the home and family. And the elder brother should have been the one who should have been going and searching for the, the, the younger brother who was living prodigally, living wastefully. But this, in this story, the older brother never did. And that's because he had certain relational issues. He didn't understand his father. We know that from the end of the, the story of the prodigal son, the, the Bible says that he was, well, the Bible gives us indication he was frustrated and he was, uh, he was irritable that there was never a party thrown in his honor, that he had worked for his father all those years faithfully and there was never a party. Here's something to consider that sometimes we as Christians, we can work faithfully for our father. We can, we can serve and be diligent. But what really God wants is a relationship with him as our heavenly father. And this elder brother didn't have that relationship. And he was irritable concerning his younger brother. He should have been the one who should have been pursuing. But the truth of the scripture is this. The Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 8, teaches us that Jesus is like our elder brother. He is our elder brother. He is the firstborn amongst many brothers. And Christ, our elder brother, has come to seek and save the, old, the elder brother who carries with him the spirit of the heavenly father. Jesus has gone out to seek and save that which is lost. And that is the passion and the pursuit of missions and evangelism and outreach and ministry to pursue, to pursue, to pursue, to not stop. That's the, that's the nature of the Holy Spirit. He pursues. He's been called the, the, the hound of heaven. A hound pursues and pursues and pursues. So the father is pursuing in, in the same regard because he has sent his son. He has sent his spirit. The father has sent the church. God, our heavenly father, pursues. And we as fathers are called to pursue our children. Do you know when we use this phrase pursue, it also is a phrase that we hear about in relationships, especially romantic relationships, that men are called to pursue women and not the opposite. We have a few instances in scripture, like, like in the book of Ruth, where Ruth um, was, was uh, de desiring um, to, to be married to Boaz, and she she uh, she pursued him. She she sat at his feet at the harvest and pursued him. But more than not, in the scripture we see, and, and in human nature, it's the responsibility of a man to pursue the woman. Well, in in a in a heavenly relationship of love, fathers lovingly towards their children are called to pursue them and and to to seek them out. And I want to encourage you, do whatever you can, fathers, to keep this relationship aspect uh, with, with your children going. If your children are young, sometimes we think that the, the greatest thing that I can do is provide for our children. But when children get older, they, they may not remember all of the lavish things that we are able to provide, but they will remember uh, the, the time that we spent with them. I've often said this phrase that you, fathers can spell the, the love that they have for their children. They can spell this word love, T-I-M-E. And I want to tell you, I've heard my children say the things that they remember most or while playing board games, it didn't cost any money, lighting a fire in the fireplace because we, we lived in a very cold place, and, but it was fun to, for me to teach them how to light a fire in our fireplace and to spend time playing games or, or sometimes watching a movie with our fireplace roaring. They rem remember some of the small, simple things, the meal times that we had together, T-I-M-E, 
pursue, pursue. So this is our calling. I want to share with you a closing story and I'm, I'm hoping that I have not shared it with you. It's possible that I have. If you've never heard this story, it's, it's been very dear to me. Uh, a, a, a prolific author uh, that, that, has, uh, that has impacted my life, he wrote this story about uh, a father and a son who had a broken relationship. This adult son and father were constantly fighting together. They were living in their native Madrid, Spain home, and the, the father and son could not reconcile their, their personalities. They were almost always in disagreement. Well, finally, one, one disagreement became so heated and so difficult, the son just stormed out of the house and left home and didn't return. And the father, with this unmarried young adult son, he was heartbroken. Night after night, his son was not coming home and he didn't know where he was. And the father searched for him. He pursued, he pursued and pursued. He went to all the places that he knew his son would hang around with his friends, talk to his friends, but his friends never heard from him or didn't know anything about his whereabouts. Finally, after weeks, maybe even months, if the story goes like this, he took out an ad in the local newspaper. And the, the father wrote a classified ad in the newspaper and said these words, Dear Paco, the son's name, Dear Paco, I miss you and I want you to know that I long for you to return home. All is forgiven. All is forgiven. Please come home. Signed, your loving father. P.S. Meet me in front of this newspaper office at 12 o'clock on Saturday. Well, this father wrote this forgiveness classified ad and it ran all week, all week, all week, day after day after day. In faith, the father went down to the newspaper office and about 11.45 in the morning, he got close to the office and there was a, a big crowd outside, all young men, and all of them, their name was Paco. You see, all these young men were looking for the forgiveness and the love of their father. And to me, this is the gospel message. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. God pursues. This father pursued. Many men just wanted to return home to their father. And many a times as I talk about things like this, I know that there are people who are hearing these kinds of words from Scripture and they're realizing, I want to come home to the heart of God. I want to come home to my Heavenly Father. And you're welcome. Jesus shed his blood and he did this for you to know these words, all is forgiven. If you'll just return home, God is calling you. Well, if that word applies to you, you can just come home to the heart of God today. And as this service closes, however it's going to close, there will be an opportunity for you to have prayer. Fathers, I want to honor you. I want to honor my father. I want to honor my father-in-law. His name was Paul. My father's name was George. I want to thank God for them. And I want to thank God for you fathers who live sacrificially and are doing all of these things. And if God is tuning you up and, and uh, tweaking you up in, in these things, I want to encourage you, just be obedient to the Lord. It's a great day. It's a great day for fathers. And I just want to say to the mothers and to the children, just bless this man in the home. Let him be honored today and treat him well, treat him right. 
let him eat his favorite foods or whatever it's going to mean for him to have a blessed and relaxed day. Well, listen, Every Nation Church Penang, Pastor Jonathan Miok, we, we love you and we thank God for you. We, we do miss you and we can't wait to come back to Penang and we're praying for Penang. We know that your lockdown has become more strict and more difficult. While things have been easing up in America and uh, we, Jane and I are fully vaccinated and we've been able to travel. I traveled in ministry last weekend, uh, but now we know that Malaysia is going through some difficulties until vaccines are rolled out, until God rolls this, this, in, this scourge of, of COVID away. We're going to believe God for a great reunion. Uh, and when we return, I'm looking forward to seeing you. And of course, I can't stop by saying, not by not saying, I will look forward to eating Chinese food and especially Hokkien Mee. We love you in the Lord. God bless you so much. Thanks for this great honor. Have you all enjoyed Pastor Charles Curtis' sermon? Thank you, Pastor Charles. And uh, I would like to wish you again this, uh, this Father's Day. And uh, if you take this uh, message to your heart, you would be surely a good father. Fathers to your children and father to your spiritual children. Next week, we're going to have Teresa Lowe from uh, KL. She's going to talk about parenthood. Be sure to tune in for this special message. Thank you. Bye-bye.